morning. Good morning. We're up at stupid o'clock. It's actually three minutes to five, Gemma. Three minutes to five. To hopefully see some barn owls. That's the plan. We're in our local patch and oh. that's good. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what do you mean that's good? We're in our local spot. Patch. Patch. No, you say spot. Patch. We're on our local patch, which we we do watch barn owls here regularly. Regularly. And there are two nesting pairs in the local area. We've already seen a barn owl, which is uh, which is what we want. So. Very shortly, we're going to make our way down to our spot. The sun is about to come over the top of the trees. Uh, we should be good to rock and roll, fingers crossed. It's six o'clock in the morning now. The sun just about up and up to hit the, ne the nesting box of the barn owl. Can't quite see it on the camera because we're a respectable distance away. Let's get round here. Rich is all set up. Rich was just asking me what happens to the juvenile barn owls when um, they fledge and not last year, the year before, one of the juvenile barn owls that was ringed was located in Cornwall. So they had flown in just under a year from Suffolk to Cornwall and then lived there. It's amazing how far that they'll go. We're just coming up to the fence area where the second tree is because it's all, it's all fenced off so you can't actually get to the nest which is good good helps helps protect them we're just gonna go down the path to the next nesting tree where i can actually see one of the barn owls flying up and down the field Lots of but lots of the birds are um, all wet from the mist. So there's lots of preening going on. They're all sitting in their branches, trying to um, dry their little feathers off. So I've got a few pictures of um, the juvenile reed buntings and. A soggy blue tit <laughs> I 
thought I'd just run through what I've got with me. I've got my Nikon D500, Sigma 6, 150 to 600mm, f6.3. I'm shooting at f6.3 with a. Now, Richard goes auto ISO, but I like to choose my ISO because the auto, I find with birds in flight, when you hit the sky, the auto ISO goes so low, even when you drag the shadows, it, it just brings, it just gives you a shoddy shot. So I always like to choose mine. And if I'm overexposed, then I find that's better than being underexposed anyway. But with the light meter, it's normally spot on. You can slightly, for, well for me, I find I can slightly underexpose for a bar now, being so bright white. It always, you don't really need to have at the correct exposure so it's also sli slightly a slow slower bird in flight so you can, if the light isn't quite right you can get away with about a shutter speed of about a thousand um, I'm shooting in group mode I find that group mode's better for flight and I have a little button that I've set up at the front um, I think it might be the PV button that as soon as I press that it goes into um, single focus mode so um, if the bird perches I can quickly flick into that mode and be alright that way as well. Good evening. It's 7:23 and we're back. We are back. Back, again. back to the same place to try and see if we've got any hope. Oh, the deer is still there. Rich is coming over. I wonder if he's fed better down that end. He walks so slow because he's just carrying a mountain of gear. That's why he has to stay stationary quite a lot. I couldn't hack it. Oh, he's found it. He's pointed to it. He's there. about the tripod <laughs> just as I was saying about how he's got so much equipment he's lugging it about he um, said exactly the same thing This flight shot was created by Gemma. She took six images of the same barn owl flying across the scene. 
then using a free Microsoft program you use layers in Photoshop to paint in the bird thus giving an impression of flight. I'll leave a link to the YouTube video in the description below. So we found some water voles which are different to bank voles because one they live in the water or are semi-aquatic and two they're bigger than a bank vole. Britain's biggest species of vole. They're reddish brown in colour. They are very popular with barn owls as they tend to feed on them all through the year. Got lots of pictures, now we're heading back to the car. I don't know if I can make it all the way to the car without stopping and <laughs> getting some more, but we'll see. The pros of bringing a lightweight camera is means I don't have to carry all that. Yeah, I've got 2.8. 10.8 he hasn't because he's got a converter on it. So he's like at 5.6. And I don't have to carry it all. I'm at 2.8, he's not at 2.8 because he never takes the converter off. Otherwise he can't actually get anywhere near the birds. That's us done for the day. We'll see you next time with... Hmm, don't know, till we actually do it. We'll see what that could be landscape, could be wildlife. Until then, bye for now.